Mark Meadows woke up this morning to the grim new reality that he's now in a legal vice. On the one side, legal moves and mistakes of his own making, as detailed in blockbuster new reporting this morning in the New York Times. And on the other, an ex-boss who's not even pretending at this point to not talk like a mob boss. From that New York Times account, quote, one morning last month in an Atlanta federal courtroom, Mark Meadows, former President Trump's final chief of staff, was in the hot seat. And he was the one who had put himself there. Meadows' lawyer had made the surprise move of asking his client to testify in an effort to have the Georgia election interference case against him moved to a federal court, a venue where his chances of acquittal or even having the case thrown out may be a bit better than in the state court where he has been charged. The New York Times goes on to report on how Meadows likely did himself grave legal harm with an exchange in which Meadows appears to lie about his own role in the fake elector's plot. From that Times reporting, quote, Meadows hit a snag when a prosecutor asked whether he had, quote, any role in coordinating the bogus electors who were used in a last-ditch effort to keep Trump in power after he lost the 2020 election. Quote, no, I did not, he replied. The prosecutor then introduced into the record a December 2020 email that Mr. Meadows wrote to a Trump campaign staff member. In it, Mr. Meadows wrote this, quote, we just need to have someone coordinating the electors for the states, end quote. The exchange, which prosecutors will almost certainly use against Meadows at trial, underscored the high-stakes gamble that he took by testifying. So far, the gamble has not paid off. In early September, U.S. District Judge Steve C. Jones declined to move Meadows' case to federal court. Meadows has appealed. And as we said, on the other side, the swamp of alligators waiting to bite Meadows' head off if he cooperates. Trump telling NBC News this about Meadows, quote, well, I hope he's loyal to me. <laughs> that hope slash warning comes as the New York Times reports this, quote, Trump has been warned by the federal judge in the case also stemming from his efforts to stay in office brought against him by the special counsel Jack Smith to avoid saying anything that might affect the testimony of witnesses. His comment about Meadows could attract new interest. It should come as no surprise that the ex-president would want to keep Meadows close. Few people have a better grasp into every single aspect of the coup plot than the former White House chief of staff. Here's former Meadows aide Cassidy Hutchinson. I remember leaning against the doorway and saying, I had an interesting conversation with Rudy, Mark. Sounds like we're going to go to the Capitol. He didn't look up from his phone and said something to the effect of, there's a lot going on, Cass, but I don't know. Things might get real, real bad on January 6th. I remember Pat saying something to the effect of, Mark, we need to do something more. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of, you heard him, Pat. He thinks Mike deserves it. I remember like glancing and he's still sitting on his phone. And I remember Pat saying to him something to the effect of, the rioters have gotten to the Capitol, Mark. We need to go down and see the president now. And Mark looked up at him and said, he doesn't want to do anything, Pat. Ms. Hutchison, did White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows ever indicate that he was interested in receiving a presidential pardon related to January 6th? Mr. Meadows did seek that pardon. Yes, ma'am. Questions today around the future of a co-defendant and central witness to the Trump coup plot is where we begin today with some of our favorite reporters and friends. Former top Justice Department official, our friend Andrew Weissman, is back with us. And former assistant director for counterintelligence at the FBI, Frank Figluzzi, is also back with us at the table, New York Times reporter Katie Benner. Um, Andrew Weissman, I want to start with you. And I want to start with the, the, the Times analysis, I think, I think, which gets at something we've been nibbling around the corners at, which is that Meadows really did himself a lot of harm by lying and then being contradicted by his own words in that email. That seems to have set in. Um, do you think that plays into Jack Smith's negotiations with him, if there are any, over his testimony? Yeah, so, you know, this is one where uh, you know, Mark Meadows might have thought that in order to carry his burden with respect to removing the case to federal court, that he needed to testify. 
Uh, we know from Jeff Clark, who's had his hearing today, that you know if you don't testify, it's pretty hard to carry your burden of going forward. But I think that may have been a miscalculation, precisely because of reasons you and I have talked about that the Times is reporting on, which is that he really got caught in what is hard to describe as anything other than a lie, where he said he had no role whatsoever in connection with the fake elector scheme. And you don't have to rely just on Cassidy Hutchinson. The state has and the federal government has his own words in emails and text messages. So here's the, the issue. Um, it makes it very hard to now be a cooperator if you have just committed perjury. So that makes it harder for him to have that as a potential out. Um, but it also means that it's easier to charge him. Um, I, I remember as a prosecutor very often being sort of on a razor's edge as to whether we had enough proof whether to charge somebody. And then we discovered that the person lied about something in our case. And that can really make the difference between, because you're trying to show intentionality. You want to get into that person's head and their mens rea. So if you have somebody lying, that goes a long way for a prosecutor to solve that issue. So I think he did himself just a whole world of hurt. Even, even if he's able to convince the 11th Circuit that they should remove the case from state court to federal court, he still will face trial. But he is, um, you know, in my view, he has lied to get himself there. Uh, and just, Andrew, to go through what Meadows would get Jack Smith if he were to cooperate fully, we don't know that he is, that he would, or that he isn't, actually, to be totally blunt. Um, Meadows is the connective tissue between the Willard meeting and whether Trump knew anything going on there. Meadows is the connective tissue between knowledge of violence. He was on the receiving end of all the briefings about what the presidential protective detail was seeing as they advanced that OTR from the White House to the Capitol. He knows about the Pence attacks and the threat. He's the one telling other senior White House officials he doesn't want to do anything. He agrees with them, thinks Pence deserves it. The fake electors, as, as recounted in his own emails, he's coordinating efforts to create fake slates of electors. And Rudy at the White House, we don't talk enough about that, but he's the one bringing him in for these meetings days ahead of January 6th and planning to move Trump down to the White House when Cassidy says, looks like we're going down there. That's because Rudy, with Mark Meadows' knowledge, is planning to move him down there. Just talk one more time about how valuable he would be as a full cooperator. Sure. Well, um, there's no question that the government can make its case against Donald Trump without him. They brought the case um, without um, his being a cooperator. And they can obviously also get lower level people um, like a Cassidy Hutchinson, like a Tavares in the Florida case. However, to use your mob analogy, um, and I am old enough to remember this, having done these cases, this is if you've got John Gotti as a defendant and the underboss Sammy Gravano decides to flip. Um, that is Mark Meadows' relationship to Donald Trump. He is there for everything. Um, you know, Mark Meadows testified and tried to make it seem like he was literally just like a booking secretary that he just sort of arranged rooms and moved people around. No, he was the chief of staff to the president of the United States. Like, you cannot get a more central, instrumental person to the functioning of the White House, as you know, Nicole. And so I really do think this is like getting somebody's underboss, their number two, the vice president, you know, with Victor the president, the underboss of Victor the boss, whatever analogy you want to use, you do not get anybody who is more inside than a Mark Meadows.